in the 8th episode of our journey across Botswana and the Caprivi, we spent two nights at Nambwa Camp, situated on the Kwando River's banks in the Caprivi Strips Kwando core area of the Boabata National Park. We have some amazing game drives and have hippos and elephants in the camp. We leave early from Ngepi Camp, stop at the Vundu for petrol and travel east via the Caprivi Strip to Nambwa Camp, which is our destination for the day. We stop briefly on the dirt road just outside of Ngepi to restock our supply of wood and show our support to the villagers. Even though it's only a 225 km drive from Ngepi, it will take you 4 to 5 hours. For us, it took 8 hours. The shortest route is not always the best route. The Vundu side offers two possibilities for turning off the B8 into the gravel road towards the camp. The main gate is about 15 km down the road. You can either turn off at the first sign or at that point. Since we had already travelled this road on a previous trip, we decided to take the first turn off. The gravel road splits at 7 km from the paved road. You can continue straight or take a right. We took the same route as before, so we went straight. After another 7 km, this routes end at the main road that leads from the Kwandu Park office to the camp. Since this route is much quieter than the main road from the gate, I would advise that you turn right at the split. You will most certainly see some wildlife on this route. The main road can be taken as you exit the park. It travels far more quickly. On the other hand, getting stuck is very possible on the main road because it's lined with challenging sand. It did not take long for us to realize that we ought to have turned right and followed the longer route. This route was overgrown, had not been used for a very long time and in some areas was completely undrivable. There were no signs on the road that it was no longer in service. There is no doubt that driving on this road will leave scratches on your car. It was getting late and rather hot by the time we made it to the main road. Some of us got bogged in a few times because the sand was loose. I don't recommend going to Nambwa with a 2x4, even though I think 
A 4x4 is not necessary for a trip like this if you are traveling in a group and have help if you run into any problems. You will make it to the camp even if you are going to be towed almost all of the way. That could result in a lengthy discussion around the campfire with your driving skills being the main topic. It's been a while since our last visit to Nambwa and a lot has changed. When we arrived at the lodge where we had previously camped, we discovered that the camping site had been moved further into the bush. The lodge area is now only for use by guests staying in rooms. Campers are not allowed to make use of the facilities. Without grabbing a cold one from the bar and checking in with everyone back home, we tracked our steps to the newly constructed campsite which was roughly 5 kilometers away. When compared to our previous visit to Nomba, the campsite was a major improvement. Hippos are quietly going about their lives in a water hole right next to the camp. Our large group found no trouble at all settling into the spacious campsite. While yet another delicious meal was being prepared for the group, everyone got settled in. Who got stuck the most times during the day was the big topic for the evening around the campfire. Although the kitchen section has a 220 volt socket, the camping area is not equipped with electricity. The bathroom facilities are nicely built, each with a unique design. The camp caretaker keeps a wood fire donkey running which provides hot water. There is a shared kitchen space under a roof with running water and a place to do the dishes.
One of the campgrounds where you don't wander off into the night is this one. Just outside of the light, we had hippos eating next to us. We could hear them shred the grass. We heard lions at night in the distance, and painted dogs are commonly found in this area. The next morning, we were treated to a breathtaking sunrise over the nearby water hole, where hippos were chatting about the evening's activities. Enjoying the sounds of nature, we stayed at the viewing deck for a while. We drove around searching for the painted dogs or the lions for the rest of the morning. There were a few signs that we discovered, but the dogs and cats were nowhere to be found. After an incredible drive filled with many special animal sightings, especially at the Horseshoe Bend where we were hoping to see the elephants during their afternoon sundown or later, we made our way back to camp. Everyone joined in with lunch. We had a spread of unique cheeses crackers, olives and wine. For an afternoon of game watching, you have to visit the Horseshoe Bend viewing deck. The animals, especially the elephants, travel great distance to drink water here in the afternoons. The elephants were supposed to turn up to drink water, but we didn't see them. Feeling betrayed by the elephants, we made our way back to camp, certain that we would at least see the hippos once again. We weren't expecting the elephants to be waiting for us at the camp. Just as we got there, a large herd of elephants passed through the camp, which guaranteed to be an amazing experience. Even one of the elephants assisted with the laundry. Once the elephants had left, we got settled in, and Marius and Caitlin ensured that we had a big bonfire to round off the day. We had a good experience at Nambwa camp. We saw a lot of wildlife, the bird life is amazing, and the campsite is really nice. However, we had to leave the next day, as we were travelling to Kasani, where we would stay at Senyati Lodge for four nights, enjoy the Chobi, and visit the Vic Falls one of the world's seven natural wonders. Look out for the next episode, where at last we see the lions and a herd of elephants cross the river right in front of us, and we get soaking wet at Vic Falls.